Hello, my name is Tristan Carter, and this is Jacob Genders. He's going to be my live audience member in my informative speech today. All right. You have the right to remain silent. Now, what does that mean, and where in our Constitution does it say this? Our government has taken extreme caution in deciding which laws should be added or amended to our Constitution to protect us. Many things that we take for granted now are simply privileges that have been granted to us. But what rights are there to protect us? Many of them can be listed in our Constitution, but some of the most infamous ones that we know are just unwritten rules or guidelines taken by our justice system to help better protect us. To begin with, I'm going to start with the right to privacy. Now, the right to privacy can be taken so many different ways because of its large scope and how vast it's grown since its introduction near the end of the 19th century. Several articles have been written on it back then. However, some of the most recent ones, uh, starting in 1966 with the Griswold v. Connecticut case, in which the matter of um, procreation was taken in, uh, Connecticut had stated that um, it was unlawful or illegal to use any sort of contraceptive, whether it be medicinal or instrumental. Um, and so this was taken to the Supreme Court, and then it was later ruled as unlawful because it infringed on the right to privacy. Later on, in 1973, in the Roe v. Wade case, uh, a lady out of Texas wanted an abortion, however, was denied one by Texas state law, stating that it was unlawful for a woman to have an abortion unless her life was at risk. Now, this was taken to the Supreme Court, and because the, the effect of the right to privacy was still very opinionated and there was still uh, much discussion on it, this court case in particular stands out amongst a lot because of the Supreme Court justices that were in it and their decision that day. They stated that the right to a woman's body should be to her own body and that it is unlawful for a state to infringe upon that. Um, however, after seven months, they did state that uh, the child or the fetus inside of the womb could be considered live, so it would have been illegal. Next on the right to privacy would be simply just the desire to be left alone. Now, according to Larry Ellison, he said the right to privacy is essential to the well-being of a free society. Now, when somebody takes this into a, account, they're just thinking like, oh, it's just like a hermit, like someone who just wants to you know, be left alone, all that nonsense. But really, um, this sort of right to privacy is taken in our everyday lives, from phone booths to uh, stalls to several other things that sort of protect our own desire to be left alone or to not feel intruded upon. Now, the right to privacy, um, it's... It's protected in some ways in the Third, Fourth, and Fifth Amendments. Uh, one of them stating against a search and seizure clause, clauses or um, self-incrimination. And self-incrimination actually has a lot to do with the next right that is not stated in our Constitution that I'm going to talk about, and that is Miranda rights. Now, in 1966, a man by the name of Miranda down in Arizona was actually taken into custody and while he was in custody he was not he was not told that he could have an attorney he was not told that he could just not talk he felt as though he had to comply and so when the police started interrogating him he actually gave them all the information that they wanted and he signed a statement saying that um, he was guilty now after he was convicted and they brought him or before he was convicted of it, uh, they took him to court, and the Supreme Court actually took this into their own hands, and they stated that um, statements made by a person in police custody 
could not be used in court against him or her unless there was evidence that certain procedures safeguarding the person's Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination were taken. Warren, 1966. Now, this is taken into effect now because a lot of things can be said uh, without an attorney present that an individual wouldn't know and could thus um, incriminate themselves there and further their prosecution. Um, now, there are several ways in which um, you can actually waive your right to um, your Miranda rights. Uh, this is in the case of like children or the mentally ill who are just, they're unknowing of um, their ability to just remain silent. They don't understand that they don't have to talk if an attorney is not there. Um, they just, they don't know that. And so police can kind of take advantage of that. Um, sort of to benefit them. Um, now, the, uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about, which has a lot to do with the Miranda rights, is um, another thing that it's, it's not stated as a right so much as it's more of a phrase that's taken um, kind of precedence in every single justice system in America, and that is innocence until proven guilty. Now, the reason that this has been, I bring this up, is because it's not stated. And, um, you know, being innocent until proven guilty, that relieves so much burden off of the individual who's been accused of a crime, and it takes all the burden of finding or providing proof on the officials, the law officials, um, those who have accused a person of such things. Like, Back in the 12th and 13th and 14th century, um, an individual would have had to get 12 people to claim that, yes, he's he was here the whole time and not over there. And um, clearly that's, that's ridiculous because um, in our Constitution it states that uh, we have the right to a, a fair trial and uh, a jury by our peers, right? So we don't, we don't need to, like, find... Uh, individuals to sort of um, lie or even just claim for us even if we were telling the truth. Um, uh, more on that would be um, the innocence until proven guilty. It, it sort of frees up all of our rights to us so that while we are on trial or um, if we have been accused of a crime, that nothing is taken away from us. We still have every right given to us by the Constitution, and um, we're free to do that. In conclusion, I, um, I'm going to say that there are many other rights that I didn't state that are not listed in our Constitution, and I feel like people should be a lot more aware and knowing of what is in that, because... There are many ways that we could be taken advantage of in the justice system or um, really just any sort of thing in our everyday lives that we don't know and we should be informed about. Um, it just It's a better way to protect yourself. It's a better way to, um, to understand our government, which is really interesting at times, and... For the most part, that is that is it, and I hope you learned something from this. Thank you.